Okay, very, very wet Saturday morning here in Sydney. Nice to be back into Substance Painter. I've done a little bit this week, so welcome anyone who's watching. Um, this will be recorded, obviously. We put it back onto the YouTube channel this afternoon. Um, I just want to walk you through what I did during the week, because obviously I've advanced this somewhat um, since last Saturday's stream. Actually, I didn't have one last Saturday, did I? It was a week before. I was uh, busy doing some modeling work last Saturday. Um, but yeah, good to be back into it and really enjoying Substance Paint. I got a few um, uh, updates on workflow, things that I wasn't sure of last time. And um, just looking forward to jumping back in. Let me just make my phone silent and close Twitter. Okay, all right, so everything seems to be working well. So let's take a look at where I'm up to. Um, first thing I'll say is that I actually ended up going and um, not remodeling the helmet, but reworking the helmet from, an, from a previous version. Uh, I don't know if you noticed last week, but I was getting some really nasty um, fong errors here and here which are which are virtually gone now um and also getting some it's hard to see I'm just gonna move the light around holding the shift key and the right mouse button i was also getting a fair bit here and here you can still see a little bit just there a little bit of pinching and but you know very uh, shiny chrome is really unforgiving with these kind of errors um and i haven't quite gotten rid of all of them but um i got this much better than it was it was really bugging me. I thought, oh, maybe I'll just ignore it. But I did go back and spend a couple of hours um, not remodeling this part of the helmet, but just re... Um, I went back to a previous version and I just um, I just adjusted it um, just to make that go away. That looks so much better now. <laughs> it was just annoying the hell out of me. Um, I've probably got an example somewhere, but I'll, um, I won't dig into that now I'll just move on um, one thing to keep in mind though is if you're going to go back and change the geometry then of course the UVs are going to change so I had to go back into Ryzen UV and just quickly um, fix up the UVs which only took a few minutes and once that was done um, you know, keeping sure to keep everything on the same um, um, UV tiles not mess this up at all the UV layout um, it was just a helmet, so it was just, it was basically just this one down here, 1013. Didn't have to change these. So it was 1013, this section here, and this this part here. So I just re unwrapped that um, based on the new geometry in Ryzen UV. And then I came up to the edit menu un under product configuration, and I selected that new model, the new FBX file. Very, and it says here, be careful modifying these parameters because you can really screw things up. But I knew everything was going to be okay. Uh, I was very careful not to not to change anything dramatically. And it updated that file. I just rebaked these two tiles. Oh, sorry, the, uh, the helmet. Um, and I was ready to go. So it is possible to make changes to a model halfway through. And I actually ended up doing it three or four times. And I'm still alive to, to tell the tale, so that was um, that was okay. Hey Eduardo, have any questions? Just um, shoot them over in the chat. If you see something that I can be doing better, just shoot it in the chat. Um, I'll work on work for the next couple of hours. Got my coffee. Okay, so let's just. Um, oh, one other thing too, as an update from last week. We're talking about texture sets. I talked about the fact that I've only got one one material and I'm using UDIMS. And I wasn't sure how to hide the um, uh, the objects that I wasn't working on. And I knew there was a way, but I've forgotten. And there is actually this little guy up here, hide, ignore, excluded geometry. And the shortcut for that is Alt-H. So you can see I can hide everything I'm not working with. So I don't have to work with multiple materials anymore. I could if I wanted to, but it just really doesn't make much sense. 
I can work with UDINs with one material, one texture set. Um, and there's my texture set there with all of my UDIMs. Um, and that that works perfectly across in Redshift Cinema 4D. So, um, so yeah, so this little one here using geometry masks, it hides geometry with Alt H and you can turn things on and off, which is super useful. Little update from last week. So let's take a look at um, where I got to. Now I've actually got shadows on here. It's not quite good to have um, shadows on occasionally to get a better idea of how this might look without going into iRay. So I'm going to come and turn my shadows off. My texture set settings. Uh, not texture set settings. Uh, my display settings and just turn off my shadows. There we go. Now I've also got the panorama um, HDR turned on. I'm going to change that. I'm going to bring that back to... Um, I'm still... <laughs> Still clicking away to try and find the one that I want. Um, panorama, here we go. I want Studio O2. Okay. As I mentioned last week, I just don't want that blue and green and stuff sort of messing up my um, my interpretation of the colors. So black and white is quite good. It doesn't look very good. I mean, Mando wouldn't be in a studio, would he? He'd be out in the out in the um, in the Star Wars universe. Um, okay. Hey, the Corix. Okay, so last week I was just blocking out the various textures. Um, I don't think I got to a leather, so I found a reasonably good base leather, which I put on the on the strap. Um, I did go in and change the metal we'll talk about that in a sec the bez car um, i found a reasonably good piece of timber for the stock and i just chucked some chrome on the back here i'm just ignoring that for a moment this whole gun i'll do that last come through and just do this last um, and i've still got the same materials um, on the shirt and the flak vest that i had last week i'm pretty happy with those uh, I'll go through and adjust those later. And you will notice that I've actually um, gone a bit further with the cape. It actually ended up coming out quite well. I'm not sure if the actual cape is this sort of fluffy. Obviously, this is done using normals. I'm going to go in and add a furriness to it in Redshift using hair in Cinema 4D. That should be a good, good um, experience to do that. I just want to make that look a little more realistic. Um, so let's start with that. I'll just show you what I did. Uh, come to my layers. Remember last week we put everything into folders. So if I come to my cape <coughs> and uh, last week I think I had um, I think it was this one. No, not that one. Uh, yeah, I had this woven um, I had one of these materials. I was trying a few different ones and I put a whole bunch of them together because remember, Substance Painter will um, combine normal detail, height detail, unless you tell it not to. So I've got the, obviously nothing on there. I've got this wool woven grey at the base and that's giving me this nice bump. Then I've got this other material which I thought was quite good, this wool Cara Black and these are all from Substance Source on top of that. And that's what's giving me the color. I, I found I couldn't get the right color with wool woven gray, couldn't get it quite right. But combining these two gave me the kind of color that I wanted. And then I put some felt on top of that. So you can see the felt has that kind of, you know, micro detail. Um, and this has a few little splotches. Actually, the felt sort of adds those sort of splotches. There's sort of a little bit of um, you know, a few light areas and makes the makes the material look more irregular, which I, which I quite liked. And this is something I do a lot in Substance Painters. I'll just grab a whole bunch of materials. And if one is not doing the, the job, often I'll combine them together to create um, what I want. And I think that looks pretty good. It's, it's pretty close. It looks nice when the lighting's on it. And from a distance, 
looks quite good. I might go in and adjust that more, but I'm not working on the um, not working on the cape at the moment. But that was a good a good base, I think. Uh, and the other thing is the bez car. Obviously, um, I've come a long way since uh, last week. Um, so let's take a look at that. So that's my armor and visor. You can see, look at all these, look at all these dirt layers. I've got the height, noise, dirt, dirt, roughness, roughness, smudgy, dirt, grime, dirt, and dust. Um, let me just turn all those off. And this one's not turned on. Um, I want to make sure I know where I'm up to. So that was under roughness. All right, so just turn these off. Okay, so there's the almost the base. Let me just turn off this height noise. Turn off the visor. Actually, I'll leave the visor turned on. And in my armor, um, I ended up using chrome. I think last week we had um, uh, a different material, but I ended up using chrome because this chrome actually has quite a good chrome. I think I got it from Substance Source. Um, let me just give me a bit more space. Um, it's got roughness. It's got a variation. It's got a few different um, uh, controls in there, which I like for chrome. Um, you know, I can add dirt into the chrome if I wanted to. I didn't end up doing that because I wanted to build up my own. But I liked I liked that sort of foundation that it gave me. This roughness variation is really good. Obviously, he's not you know his his armor hasn't just come out of the um armory and it's not perfect i think i figure this is more mandalorian out in the desert you know he's been in a few uh, few skirmishes his, his arm is dirty obviously not scratched because as far as i'm aware bezcar doesn't scratch um, and not dented because it doesn't dent um, but it does get really dirty so i wanted to get that sense of real dirtiness um, and it's quite a nice and not have to deal with scratches and stuff. So base chrome, you can find a lot of different chromes on Substance Source. Um, I did end up putting uh, different materials in these areas here. I looked at a few reference images, this this thing here and this area here, and they, they appeared to be um, different materials. I figure they actually light up, not sure, but they didn't look to be chrome to me. So I just I just added some different materials in there. So let's just go to the um, uh, see if I, I'll click on here. You can see see how um, in order to separate those, I've just gone into polygon fill mode, and I've gone into um, uh, mesh fill. Oh, sorry, yeah, I think it's mesh fill, and I've just selected those just by clicking on them. If I go X and do that, I'm not mesh fill. I want, yeah, I want mesh fill. If I go X, choose black. See that separates that, it turns it off. If I wanted to add something to that, X, choose white, and that adds it to that. So basically just using a black mask, uh, add black mask, and then going into polygon fill mode, and then just isolating those two, those two bits. So polygon fill is still really handy. So with geometry masks and polygon fill, I have all the control I need really to um, to isolate my geometry and texture it. Hey, Josema, I guess that's how you pronounce your name, Josema. <laughs> yeah, so that's the base chrome and that's nice to have that sort of um, smudginess. Now, Emmanuel from um, Zlotl Studio was really helpful this week in um, giving me a tip on how to um, make the reflection a little more irregular. And I did that using um, this, uh, this height layer. So this is once again another fill layer. And to this, I've applied Perlin Noise. Let's turn it on and off. Um, turn it on first. And 
let's see if I can I want to get this down below let's just grab this and put this below here come on put that there put that there okay so you can see I've got only got the height um, it's a fill it's a fill layer uh, I've only got height selected if you hold down the alt key and click one of these channels it will solo that I've got a very 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 tiny height on there 0.07 because obviously I don't want to add dent to this but you see when I turn this on um, on and off check out the reflection see how it bends the reflection and I think that looks really good it just gives you that irregular reflection on the chrome and it's such a big change without it there's no irregularity at all but with that Perlin noise on the um, where am I? I got to come back to my brush and select my Perlin noise with that Perlin noise on there this is just grayscale Perlin noise it just breaks that up and makes that look more irregular but if you go too far what happens is you start it starts to look dented so let me just come back to here and increase the height so if I go too far then the actual helmet starts to look dented and we don't want that <laughs> okay if it's an old style sort of you know uh, medieval helmet that would be perfect but we just want to just a touch because this way it doesn't necessarily look dented but it just breaks up that reflection which is really good but I also wanted to I never you don't you can't imagine that this chrome is going to be perfectly smooth it just I don't know it just can't be even if it's Fezco even if it's fantasy so I like to add um, a little bit of um, height again this time once again to a mask and here just a bit of 3d pearl in fractal noise but really fine let me just turn that on let's see if we can see that I've got this, this is actually in um, 4k this particular unit you can see it's very fine let me just turn that on and off see how that breaks up that reflection and if we move out it's almost almost indistinguishable it's almost impossible to see but it's just it just breaks it up And of course, I didn't want to have it on the on the visor, so I just um, added a paint, um, added paint to the mask just by right-clicking and choosing Add Paint, and I just masked out the um, uh, the visor. Where is it? Just masked that out. There you go. Using the same technique, using polygon fill because otherwise it would have got that same noise. There's that noise there, you can see that. And if I alt click on the mask for the for the Perlin noise for the um, uh, previous one we looked at, you can see there's that noise there. It's much easier to see when you alt click on the mask. So, <clears throat> I mean, looking pretty good. That's a good base. Started to be comfortable with that. Then I started to throw a lot of different noise on there. Um, so a lot of, lot of different um, dirt. And I'll tell you what, <coughs> Substance Painter has so much grunge and dirt and noise. You can get into sort of like a, um, a, a, you know, a decision loop where you just can't decide. Is that, is that grunge grungy enough or you know, is that too grungy? You know what I mean? And, it, and they, in the end, they all start looking the same. Um, you know, should I use concrete or should I use something else? You know, it's obviously it's a creative decision. Um, you want to try and match your source, uh, your reference image as much as possible, of course. So that's what you're sort of going for. But dirt is dirt. I mean, no one places dirt and make to make it look realistic. It's just dirt. Um, so there is a certain amount of throwing it on, but there's a little bit of creativity in there as well in placement. Um, what I end up doing is literally looking for a whole bunch of different ones in the shelf. Um, there's a lot of different um, ways you can add dirt. 
obviously there's lots of grunge um, alphas um, which you can just add a black mask add a fill add a mask and then you can you know grunge up the height the roughness um, there's different procedurals as well and there's also these um, smart masks which are a combination of um, you know procedurals and alphas and um, generators so all the, I tried a whole bunch of different ones and sometimes you can just throw something on and it's perfect it's just that's all you need just tweak it a bit but often it's too much or too little or it doesn't really match what you're trying to create so what I end up doing is just throwing a whole bunch of things on throwing too much on and then stripping it back and that's what I was kind of up to um, the other day when I was working on this so um, I found it um, I guess when you when you look at the actual helmet look at the reference images um, I'll open that up in a moment obviously and the same with anything like this that's you know been out in the in the in the elements you're going to have overall dirt um, then you're going to sort of have grime in the cavities and you're probably going to have some dust on there and it's going to build up in the cavities um, so there's different kinds of dirt and different areas that would be affected more um, and I threw all of it on and then I found, found myself actually basically starting with the um, sort of dirt occlusion because I found having all of these on all together it was so confusing there was so much dirt on this that I just couldn't see what I was doing I just couldn't tell what I was doing but you can see um, this one here this dirt occlusion is just basically um, where am I just black it's just a, a very very dark brown texture with roughness and color turned on and with um, a dirt generator and that's just done by adding generator and choosing dirt levels and a bit of paint just to paint it out so you can see I've gone through and I've actually started um, with paint now fine-tuning this that's that was the default it was way too much especially down in here so I've added paint and I've gone through with a um, with a dirt brush so come down to my brushes and this is one of my favorite brushes here which is uh, where is it dirt one I think it's dirt one just a dirt brush um, no not dirt one e that one there come through with a dirt brush control right mouse button to change the size of that and I've come through with the black brush and just started to reduce the amount of dirt so that's the first layer let's just hit M again and it's a little difficult to see obviously because of all the reflection but you can start to see it's building up that dirt particularly in these areas around here and obviously always um, shift right mouse button to move the environment around you can see how that dirt is all building up in there let me just turn that on and off again like that after that um, I've added something quite similar which is basically um, dirt again I often duplicate my layers I've got this on 4k that's why it's taking a little bit of time to redraw so let's just option click on that or alt click so that's even tighter that's actually adding even more but a little darker that's actually a steel as a base material with dirt on top of that let's just turn that on and off see how that, that's really in quite tight in there so just layering that up and like I said when I started this little section you know you can get into sort of like a creative loop where you know how much dirt is enough dirt um, but I just I just keep turning putting things in there uh, turning them on turning off um, adjusting the settings using the brush tool to fine-tune until I until I sort of zero in on what I think looks good I'm no means you know uh, an expert at this but um, 
See that to me that that to me is starting to look fairly fairly realistic. I like how it's got some extra here. And you're trying to build as much as you can using um, um, procedural techniques. So coming in and um, you know clicking on the generator and adjusting the you know, the dirt level, the grunge scale, getting that as close as possible. And only then coming in and using your paint tools just to fine tune. So grime, dust. Uh, so next was um, uh, dust on top. I know I'm sort of jumping around here, but these are the ones I was working on first um, or, or, or fine tuning first. And dust obviously is a lighter color. And I may end up putting a little bit more dust in here. Let's go to, <clears throat> so this is, uh, where am I? This is actually um, a preset material that I got from one of the tutorial series that I watched from, I think it was ArtStation. Um, really good one about um, texturing a hot rod. And it came with a whole bunch of different um, smart material. So I just grabbed one of those and once again adding a little bit more dust on top of everything else. Hey Anchor. So let me just turn that on and off. I'm just going to hide my um, 2D view for a moment. Let's turn that on and off. So you can see it's ad actually adding a little bit more in there but it's slightly brown. Because this is kind of, this is not my, it's not my oil, not my oil, like, or, you know, this is not my grime um, layer. This is my dust layer, so the color is slightly different. So it, it, it took me three different layers to sort of get that to a situation where I thought that was starting to look, you know, starting to look reasonably good. And then I had all my other layers, so I started turning on these ones as well. So let's just turn those on. Um, I've got this um, smudgy wipe roughness. Turn that on. Give that a moment. It starts to add a bit of dirt in there. Let's go. Uh, Mask, so open that up. So this is just um, just roughness. A lot of this stuff is just affecting the roughness. Obviously, not changing the color. Um, and once again, um, in this particular case, it is a um, grayscale alpha, so grunge wipe, smudge heavy, and then a dirt generator on top of that. And have a look at this. Let me just I'll click on that. I'll just turn all these off. So that's without anything on. Here's the grungy wipe smudge heavy. You can see that's really full on. Um, and if we just turn that back on again, you can see that <laughs> looks like he's um, been in a cake fight or something like that, or, or dived in mud. Um, and that's obviously way too much. <laughs> looks like he got shot on by something. Um, but you need to go and fine tune these kinds of things. So. On top of that, I added a generator. So add generator, that's a dirt generator. And notice how it's set to multiply. So adding the dirt, dirt generator on top and setting that to multiply um, gives us the, this. See how it knocks it right back? And obviously I can go into the dirt generator and you know adjust the, you know, the dirt level and um, do all the different things in the dirt generator, which I've already done. Now the reason it's taking a little bit of time to redraw is because I'm working in 4K. I don't see any sense in um, fine tuning your materials at anything less than 4K because it just doesn't look the same. Um, and also another grunge map on top of that. So there's this one here and that's also set to multiply. So you can see how adding those all together and then um, using a little bit of paint just to paint that out. So paint, just painting out areas where I thought there was too much. 
gives me gives me that. Let's turn on the next one. The next one is fingerprints. And this you'll see a lot of repetition here. This is all basically using the same techniques. So there's my fingerprints. And you can see I've come through once again, clicking on the paint layer, um, come through with my brush, and then just you know removing it in areas. I figured he'd have a fair few fingerprints around the side of the helmet. Um, probably a few on the visor maybe probably a few too many around here. So I'm just using paint just to, there's obviously way too many in here. So just using paint with a, um, a big dirt brush. I like dirt brush because it kind of gives me a, some more broken stroke and makes it look a little more um, organic. So, I mean, he's been handling this a little bit. You'd assume that there would be a few fingerprints here and there. Now I could go through and I might go through and put in very specific fingerprints. So obviously, well, actually, no, he uses gloves, doesn't he? So he wouldn't, I mean, this is, might be when he's handled the helmet when he's not got his gloves on. But when he's in action, when he's pressing these buttons, he's using gloves, so he wouldn't have fingerprints on it. Let's go back to M. And see if we can see some of those fingerprints. So they're, they're very subtle. Let me just turn them on and off. Like that. And this is, I mean, where I put them is totally subjective. With a little bit of thought about how the helmet might be used. Um, some roughness dirt on top of that. I think this is the last layer that I was working on. So now you can see it's actually starting to look fairly dirty. This roughness dirt looks like that. I like to sort of layer my, my dirt and roughness. So you'd have an you know, overall um, morning Faywood, overall um, dirt, which is fairly light. And then you'd have little bits of um, dirt, you know, sort of sticky older dirt that hasn't been able to be wiped off at a different transparency, so slightly more opaque. Um, so layering it up. So then with that first piece, this first layer of dirt that we did, this this um, this one here, smudgy white roughness. See how that's more, that's um, taking it to a much rougher state. So that's, that's a little older, um, but it, you start to layer up the dirt like this, and I think it starts to look a little more realistic although it's when I mean, it feels like it's starting to come together for me but you just don't want overall uniform dirt across the whole thing it just that would look really dumb um, so I think I was actually onto this and I think this actually is looking a little uniform so I'm going to grab my Wacom tablet because I don't you can't do this without a Wacom and um we're going to start fine-tuning this. Let me just save this for a sec. Any questions? I was been, I've been modeling for months. It's so nice to be back into... It was great to get into Ryzen UV and do the UVs, but it's so nice to be now in Substance Painter texturing my own model. Once again, I am working at 4K on this helmet. The good thing about um, UDIMS, let me just show you something. If I come down and choose a particular tile, let's just go to 2D, um, 2D only. If I come down and um, choose a particular tile, you can see, see this 101, 101. See how it says 4K down there? So I can click on 101 come to my texture set settings and I can give it an independent um, texture set resolution independent of everything else and that's great I mean, it's even independent of other parts of the helmet 
So what I can do is, uh, which is really useful, substance pain is improving all the time. Um, it means that I can look at part of the helmet in 4K, like the top, and know how the actual 4K looks, but work on the rest of the helmet in a lower resolution, which is really nice, rather than having the whole texture set um, for the helmet um, if I'm working with just texture sets in 4K, because then it's going to slow everything down. And I have to say, my workflow has been much faster doing it this way. So just, you know, um, strategically turning on the different UDIMs to 4K that I want to do. Okay, a couple of questions. Docorix, um, if you export out, it's going to it's going to export. Um, when I export it, I actually showed this in last week's stream. Docorix, um, it's going to export all of the numbered um, UDIMs with their um, base color roughness. Um, base color roughness, what else, Met metal and um, height if I want it. Um, and uh, they'll all be linked up in Redshift automatically using the um, Zolotl Live Link plugin that I use. So yeah, it's multiple textures, all with UDIM numbers. Uh, explain types of where you normally paint in. Um, well, they would, I don't normally paint in anything. I just uh, demonstrated a moment ago that I actually, I stay procedural as long as possible. Um, and then I will, rather than paint, I paint things out. So if I was going to do scratches on this, I'd cover it with scratches using some sort of procedural scratches. And then I would remove the scratches. You don't want to be going in and painting individual scratches. That's more about taking things away than adding things in. I know you've got things in the shelf like um, different tools. Um, you've got, um, uh, is it the tools? Um, you know, things like oil leaks and that sort of stuff. I'd say that those are the sort of things that you would do manually. Um, there's also the um, uh, dynamic brushes or the particle brushes, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't do a lot of stuff I need a lot of work with those. Depends on the model. But yeah, I add things procedurally and then I take away rather than um, individually painting on stuff. Because it's if you need to make changes, it's much harder that way. Okay, so I've got this at 4K. Uh, let's see. Come down to... It's really important to stay organized. Um, so I've got my paint... I think I've, I'll just delete that paint. So there's all my procedural. I've got my grunge, dirt, muddy. Grunge, dirt, muddy is just grunge, dirt, muddy, grayscale file. This is, these are all added into the roughness channel. This is all roughness. I'm not changing the color at all. Um, so grunge, dirt, muddy and grunge, rust, fine on top of that. And that's using the light um which one is it yeah light and max mode and i've got that at 40 so if i just bring that up see that so let's just come back to there just going to bring that up again so i've done a lot of explaining now now i'm actually going to start working on it uh, i'll just tell you what i'm doing as i'm doing it so that's probably too much. I might go in and add a few of these kind of bits of more that look more like sort of old stuck on mud um, at the end. For now, um, I'm going to click on my mask, uh, right click and choose add paint. You don't paint directly on the mask, you paint on a paint effect. That way you can turn it on and off, make more make adjustments to it. Now, whether I work on in this view or the other view, uh, in the full uh, rendered view, um, full material view, depends on you know what I'm doing. Sometimes it's hard to tell 
how it's really affecting it if you're just painting in um, in mask view. So I talked about not not wanting a consistent um, similar roughness all over the object. I want to break it up. So I'm just going to alt click on that again. X and this is actually a good, this is a really good um, gotcha. When I clicked on the mask again, I forgot, I'm, I'm painting on the mask, but I'm not painting on paint. So I, it's deselected paint. I'm just going to undo that. I need to select paint. Like that. So hit X. Now I like to have my brush fairly... Um, Uh, fairly faint. Now the keyboard shortcut for that is um, ah, there we go. So I'm just using my right mouse button and dragging up and down and left and right to change the size. Now what's the opacity of the stroke? That's the flow, that's the rotation. Let's try this. There we go. So now I can just do really big. So you might have a little bit more at the front maybe, um, and a little bit less on the sides. I'm just trying to break this up a little bit so it's not so uniform. It's not too bad. I mean, having I've already added two grunge textures together so it's not so bad. There's probably way too much in here. So I need to come back to here and I probably should have just pressed M there. Come down here and just start reducing this. Obviously, need to um, alt drag around it so I can see how the different the light is affecting it. I guess the name of the game is making it look as real as possible, <laughs> more real and less CG, right? If you start to see a pattern with the dirt, then that doesn't look very real. Unless you unless you painted with dirt. Yeah, stay procedural as long as you can. Wes McDermott um, just kind of kind of gave me that idea um, in one of his previous tutorials, and it's a really good way to work. And if you need to go and put in a specific scratch somewhere, then you can you can do that, right? But not until you've done this kind of thing. I'm just breaking this up. You think if, uh, I don't know if you've seen The Mandalorian, but if you think, you know, if he'd been swallowed by a monster and then sort of spat out, you know, if, if he fought the mud horn and, you know, and all of the things that he gets up to, he'd be pretty dirty. <laughs> I can't imagine him, you know, dropping off his armor for cleaning. He'd probably wipe it a bit probably have a few wipes on it. I might put a few wipes on there. Haven't got to worry about any um, seams on this because of the way I've cut the UVs. I'm actually working in UV mode, not triplanar mode. I'd rather not rely on triplanar because it does tend to soften the textures, which it has to do because it's, um, you know, it's blending them together to hide those seams. And once again, the trick is to know when is, when is enough enough, right? I've already looked at the reference image a fair bit, and it's fairly blurry. I don't think I need to look at the reference image again. If I had the actual helmet with me, 
um, I'd be pretty rich. <laughs> um, I'm actually, it's funny I should mention that actually, because I'm actually, I've actually got a, an actual helmet on order. They haven't been released yet, but Hasbro has released a full-size helmet. That'll go with my Ant-Man helmet. Maybe I'll just wear it while I'm presenting. And I'll be talking like that. Okay, I mean, that's okay. That looks reasonably good. Let me just do a quick save. So who's using Substance Painter right now? Who of you is using it right now? Well, not, not at this second, but, you know, in your workflow. It's looking reasonable. Okay, um, I've got another one here. Remember, these are all... These are all things that I've just thrown in, thinking that dirt looks quite good, um, and knowing that I wanted to sort of fine tune. I've just been working my way down. I actually started at the bottom, and I did all the occlusion at the end. Um, but um, I've been, I, I don't know, once I did that, I thought, well, it's nice to just see the occlusion first, and then just work my way down, and attack the um, um, the more spread out dirt. Let's turn this one on. What's this one? Okay. So I'll click. So that's more of a, I guess more of a concrete. You see that has got some sort of directional wipes on it, which I quite like. Uh, grunge, dust, spread, and also dirt. There's a little bit of a combo there. So the dirt one is um, a generator. So it's just a dirt generator, which is pretty handy for this kind of thing. But I've just added some grunge dust spread on top. Once again, to add those little sort of much lighter specks. So sort of more sticky, sticky mud and dirt. I don't know whether I need to, you can see that directional stuff, which is quite nice. I don't know if I need to do too much to that. It depends on, they're looking pretty dirty. Well, there's a fair bit in there, isn't there? Geez, uh, let me just, I've got to turn this on and off to see how this is affecting this. Yeah, there's, there's probably way too much in there. So once again, click on my mask, right click, add paint, and come through and let's just get this reduced. Now, my brush is kind of scattering. Um, just come over to my brush settings uh not there wrong place down here obviously you can create custom brushes my one is sort of jumping around a little bit that's because of these jitter settings see my angle jitters flying around um i'm just going to bring that down you, you don't want it too much because if you do t if you take it right down you get looking unrealistic let's bring that up a bit size jitter is what i want the size jitter is jumping around i'm going to just bring that down I'm using the dirt brush because it just gives me a much more irregular result. Now 
Now this is set to tangent wrap at the moment, which means that when I paint on this face, it'll 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 affect other faces as well. If I don't want to do that, I just got to set that to UV. See, and it only that way it'll only affect this, unless I come right down there, of course. How does that look? Press M. That's better. I haven't necessarily finished adjusting the other grunge layers yet. It's hard to see some of these because of the angle of the light. I'll probably have to come back and make some adjustments to the other ones. I want to obviously leave a little bit extra, a little bit more in the um, in these corners, these corners around here, a little bit less. On the flat surfaces. Texturing assessing the plane, very nice. Wouldn't be too much dirt on that, I'd imagine. Just trying to break up break up the uniformity of this. Much easier to see. Um, just undo that for a sec. Come back to. my paint settings where are they there we go um, just check this out I'm gonna undo that for a sec see when I when I paint check out this this really white section here when I paint on this and when I when I brush on this see how I get these strokes that are straight like that that's not very good so that's that's when I need to change the alignment if I change that back to UV So keep an eye on that. I do have um, a seam there, which and I might just not put, take too much of that out actually. And I can always add this back in as well. Now you wouldn't, um, with the paint, if I go through and <clears throat> if I press X to change that back to white, I'm going to literally paint that to full white, which is no good. If I want to remove the paint stroke, I think I have to remove, use the eraser. See that? So if you actually want to erase the paint, use the eraser. This is fairly consistent on the back here. Um, how's that looking? M. Yeah, that's all right. I don't mind it too consistent on the back. Whoa, that's huge. That's because I've got set to UV and it's, it's hitting that. So let me just press Alt H to hide that. Oh, it's still doing it. All right. Okay, 
that's ooh, that's massive, isn't it? There we go. Let's paint that on. I want to go X to make that black. And obviously, it doesn't have to be black or white. It can be grayscale. It's actually not a bad idea. Um, stroke capacity. That's better. Trying to break it up. C there. I want some areas that are slightly, you know, slightly cleaner. No edge wear on this. I, I presume that um, Beskar armor wouldn't wear along the edges. Okay, 30, 30 hours. So you've just started, right? I did 26 hours on one model last um, Monday, Tuesday. Not, not, uh, and a little bit on, um, uh, sorry, Saturday, Sunday, and a little bit on Monday. So just making it a little more irregular. Not even bothering to look at the um, material mode at the moment. It's much easier to see it in um, in the roughness channel. Bring that size down. Now I could work in symmetry, but I don't particularly like symmetrical painting for this kind of thing. Let's bring that opacity back up. That's too much. I'd rather to have the opacity fairly low um, and then work my way down to something a little darker than just take big blocks out all at once. Gets more irregular that way. Yeah, that's right. The hours do fly by, don't they? Doing that Mortal Kombat dragon, which I was tweeting out during the week. That took a few hours. It's very tricky. I, um... This is a bit off topic, but I um, during the week I watched the Planet of the Apes trilogy, the most recent one. I'd watched Rise of the Planet of the Apes, but I'd never watched the other ones. And it just became available on Disney Plus. And um, man, I really enjoyed it. It was really interesting to see over the over the what the eight years that the series was on, how good the visual effects had become. And by the time they did War of the Planet of the Apes, what 2017, the visual effects were unbelievable. And I watched some of the making of and stuff that I do seems like just kindergarten stuff compared to what people like, you know, where the studio do. Unbelievable. And I'll, um, 
you know, I'll go through, do what I think is going to look good. Look at this in iRay. Um, you know, I might come back, add a bit more, take a bit away. I don't just do one pass and go, okay, that, that bit's done. You know, all of these textures um, and uh, masks and things work together for the final look. So it's going to take a little bit of um, uh, tweaking to get that just right. I'll be lighting this in Redshift. I'm thinking there's a lot of shots in the actual show where he's in the um, in the Razor Crest and the lights from the dash are shining into his armor, like red and you know different colors. I thought maybe I'll find some of those frames and see if I can do something like that. So actually, I want to light it quite dark. I don't want it to be out in the open, you know, in the, in the daylight. We can do some quite directional lighting on it. So you'd presume that he, you know, he wipes his visor a bit, otherwise he can't see. Remember, I can erase these brush strokes if I need to. Okay. So how's that looking? If I want it dirty, but I don't want it completely covered in dirt. Maybe a little bit too much in the visor. Yep. Let's have a look at it in um, in iRay. Just quickly save this. Okay, uh, let's look into iRay here. Remembering that some of it is 4K and some of it isn't 4K. To correct, I can still get high res textures without doing that, but it's up to you if you want to work that way. I don't use Unreal, so possibly there's a different kind of workflow. Um, okay, so let's go to where am I? I've got all my stuff on the other other screen here. Let's go to Panorama. You see the difference that makes? Oh, 
I'll probably go through and um, you know fine tune it a little bit more, but I think overall that's that's pretty reasonable. Um, I'll have to go through and do the other pieces of armor as well. That'd be pretty quick. I just don't want it to be too too uniform. That's pretty reasonable. Okay, let's go to here. I'm just going to turn my air conditioning on one sec. This is a small office and um, it gets a bit hot in here. Okay. Yeah, so there'll be a little bit more fine tuning on that, but I think overall that's pretty good. Obviously there's a little bit too much dirt. Maybe on the other things, it's not, it's not too bad. They will need a little bit of adjustment. I'm getting a little bit of um, error here. I know why. I've got a diamond um, in the geometry there, and it's just not quite doing the job. But, you know, you can't see it from most angles. It's a good angle. Go back to the layers. Um, I've got one more dirt layer there. What is that? If I even need it. It's probably going to be way too much. Waiting for that to redraw. Okay. That is really dirty now. What is that texture? It's just another another whole bunch of dirt. I don't know whether I even need that. I'll leave it there because I might come back to it. All right, so um, I'm going to quickly do the chest plate.
Okay, so it's just still waiting for this to redraw. It's a little bit jumpy since I jumped out of IRA. Okay, there we go. Obviously, the strap's there, so you're not even going to see any of that. Um, I think I've actually gone through and already adjusted some of these. That's why that it didn't look too bad. Uh, fingerprints. Yep, adjusted those two. This one I haven't. Um, I'm going to go through and adjust this. Click on paint. I think there's probably a little bit too much of everything on this. I can also break this up using different brushes. Uh, let's come to my shelf. Dirt's usually the best. But there's there's also you know little little spotty dirt brushes which are good. Now you can just drag that through a little bit, not too much. Uh, dirt splash. Not quite right. There's one I used the other day, um, charcoal maybe. Just want things pretty rough. Elephant skin. Let's turn that. Close that so I can see here. Just getting this reduced. M. That's better. C. Using M and C, it's better than clicking on the actual mask itself and pressing the option or alt key because it doesn't deselect the paint layer so I knock this back a lot of this is going to be covered by the cape, a lot of this area here. You're not going to see it. Okay, good night. How's that looking? M. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Just constantly using the shift key with the right mouse button just to move that environment around. That looks good. Let's go back to our layers. Back to paint. Um, I want to go and use a different brush this time. So where's my shelf? Uh, just grab my dirt, dirt one. Dirt one will do. That was pretty huge, actually. Let's bring that stroke opacity down. That's better.
bring that back to UV. Try and clean up it a bit in areas where it might have been wiped. All going to be covered by the cape anyway, that area. Not quite actually. You can see most of the pauldrons. Okay. Next one. It's a bit repetitious after a while. I think that's probably about it actually. So you want them to look shiny but dirty, if that's a thing. That looks pretty good. You could spend hours just just doing dirt, but in the end, it's just dirt. As long as it looks, as long as it looks realistic, I've got to do the um, ab plate as well. Surface grind. That's right. Now, where am I? Three D, two D. Where's my abdominal? Uh, 1021. That should be part of that as well. So come up to my armor. So it's 1021. Click on my geometry masks. I haven't added that in. So um, I want to add that in. So I think I just go doink like that. There you go. It's all added in there. Needs to be adjusted slightly. Not going to see much of this in my final shots.
pays to stay really organized in your layers panel. Get rid of these fingerprints pretty much. Kind of smudgy fingerprints. I could leave all the occlusion. Let's go back to M. Still a little bit dirty there. What's causing that? It's that one. Okay. Paint. I don't need that much occlusion around the strap because it's not like the strap is um, attached there. It's sliding around all the time. So I'm going to get rid of most of that occlusion. Looking forward to doing the leather. The leather's going to look very cool. Quick save, and I'll go and get rid of that occlusion around the strap. It's nice to see, you know, what for months was a, a grey model start to have actual materials on it. Okay. Um, Dig into the occlusion, dirt occlusion. Yes, there's a fair bit around there. There just wouldn't be that much. So once again, I'm not on the actual paint layer. I'm on the mask. Make sure I'm on paint. Bring my mask, so my brush size down a bit. Be a little bit, you know, dust and crap, but not much. Okay, that's that one. This one I need to add paint to it. Right click on the mask, add paint. See, yep, there's way too much. If I go to undo that, go to paint and I'm on UV. Um, yeah, UV should do it, but I think this is all one, yeah, it's all one piece, so there's nothing, I can't really separate that. It doesn't really matter what I choose there, it's going to have to be a little bit more precise. Still on paint, so let's come up to... 3D only.
what do you what do you mean, um, Joe? Not sure what you mean there. What do you mean by spread out all of my mesh? It's pouring with rain outside. Getting rid of this occlusion. And one more, this one here. Once again, right click on the mask, add paint. Just get this out. I was working on the um, Mortal Kombat Dragon logo on the weekend, uh, or during the week. I'm actually going to be, I'll be texturing, you're unwrapping that in Ryzen and I'll be texturing that in Substance Painter as well, but I'll, the plan with that one is to take it into After Effects and use, um, use that and Sapphire to um, create a freezing effect. That's my plan with that. So I'll do a tutorial for that. Yeah, I always have separate objects, Joe. Everything is separate object. And this is actually physically connected. So how does that look? M. Still a little bit too much around there. Let's go C. Come up to our roughness channel. Yeah, there's a bit of too much roughness in there. So that's one of these layers. Um, let's close that up. Close that up. Let's go work out which one it is. Needs a bit more of this spotty roughness as well. Might actually even put a little bit of mud on there, actual coloured mud. Ah, oh, that's the one. Let's click on paint. really want to be viewing these channels like roughness and alt clicking on the mask to be able to see the mask it's much easier to paint that way I think that should do it uh, M that's better it would look silly with all that occlusion around the um, around the bandolera. So I think the um, best car is, it, it, it's basically done. I will come back and adjust it. And when I've got everything, I'll, I'll give it another pass. It could be nice to put a bit of brown, I don't know, mud. Let's just try that. Let's um, turn all these on. You can turn AO, A, AO off though, Joe. You don't have to have AO on. You can actually turn it off. I often will render out of Substance Painter with ambient occlusion turned off. And then I just add that back in in um, Redshift if I need it.
I think there's a setting for having ambient occlusion affect other objects or just affect itself as well. Um, I seem to remember something like that. So let me just save. Let's go, let's create some, um, a little bit of speckled um, mud on here. And I think that'll probably about wrap it up for today. Just like that. Redraw. Okay. Uh, update. So, I'll use the helmet as an example. Um, Come up to the top. I'm going to create this from scratch. So I'll just click on there, add a fill layer. Or do I want to? I mean, maybe I can find some mud in the shelf. Let's have a look. No one else uses my Wacom, so I have no problem putting it in my mouth. Okay, mud brown. Um, let's stick that up in here. It's gonna, it's gonna. You watch this. It'll look like it's. It looked like he was in. Um, he fell into a pit of mud. When it redraws. Yeah. <laughs> see. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's um. It's probably a little bit too much mud. It looks good though. It's like I can't see. I love the um uh, the normal detail in that. That's so good. All right, it's probably too much, but it's it it's it's probably what I need though. So let's come back to uh, <laughs> let's come back to mud brown. Um. First of all, have a look at the settings, maybe. Uh, let's see. So what do we got? We got variation in detail color, dirt roughness. I guess I got this from Substance Source. Um, stones. <coughs> let's, um, I like the color. Let's bring the dirt roughness right down. That's a good example of um, the multiple. Oh, yeah, that's wow. It's very wet. Let's just take that back up again. Good example of the different um, uh, resolutions as well. The visor is not quite as high resolution as the rest of it. The settings are different for that unit. Um, okay, so that's not bad. Um, what is what stones? Maybe that's the height. Looks like he's been mud wrestling. I'm going to leave that on. All right. Um, not a lot I can play with there. And I will probably, um, all of these dirt layers and all of these grime that I'm adding, this will all be the foundation for a lot of the dirt and grime um, on the leather, on the clothes. You know, I won't go in and remake all these. I'll just, I'll copy and paste and I'll just adjust these. And for the gun as well. Um, let's add a black mask. Doing all my work in the mask. First thing maybe might be to add, um, let's see, a generator. Click on the generator. Choose a generator. Um, I'll use dirt. Give that a second. I could drop the resolution while I'm doing this, but you know it's already 409, 4096, so I'll just leave it. This is adding some of the finer details, so 
Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> now, we obviously don't want any height. Well, we don't we want to adjust the the amount of height. We don't want to affect the height of the metal below. A little bit of adjustment here. Um, I could come back to that layer there. Come back to the object and turn off height, which is probably what I'll do. Um, I don't think I need to have any height. We'll see. I might add a little bit of height afterwards. Um, that looks pretty good. But it's way too much. So we can go in and adjust the dirt settings. Once again, I'm going to bring that over there. And bring that up there. I do like this substance painter interface. It's great. Um, let's adjust the dirt settings. So dirt level. Um, bring that down. <laughs> Probably a bit too much. Bring it up. Uh, how's that? That's nice how that's adding that dirt in there. Kind of crusty, isn't it? Like that. How does it look when I alt click on the mask? Yeah, so we're getting a lot of a lot of um, cavity, but we're not getting anything else. So I'll bring that back up a bit. A bit more. Hey V Pure Zap. Now that's a name. So this is the thing with these generators. You bring it up so you, uh, I add a bit more in here, but then it adds a shitload down here. Sometimes I wonder exactly what it's supposed to be doing. I've, obviously, it depends on the geometry. Let's bring that back up. See, I want kind of that on the top. That is too much, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to increase the contrast. But there's heaps down there. Uh see let's have a look at grunge amount bring that right up <laughs> okay yeah oh, i mean i love that look it's that's a great look isn't it if you're really going for the you know the mud horn scene um or the scene where he's spat out of that sand um sandworm thingy then that's pretty good so good but it's too much uh, let's bring grunge. Actually, what we'll do is we'll go custom grunge. Leave that false edge masking. We'll bring grunge amount down. And I'll mention once again, because the UVs are good, um, no need to use triplanar. So I specifically cut this helmet. The strip hides the, um, the seam. I cut it down the middle so the strip sits on top. We have no seams, which is really nice. There is a small seam, I think, at the front here. Or I may have actually, re when I redid the geometry, I may have actually removed that seam. Yeah, I did. I had that in two parts. This is split into two parts originally, but I actually joined it together. So no seams at all. Yay. Uh, it's still too much, although I do like it. The trouble is when you when you start doing grunge and stuff in Substance Planet, you just want everything to be dirty. Even if it's like a new car, a new car off you know on the showroom floor, it's got to have dirt on it. Okay, that's still too much, but it's it's getting there. 
Uh, I'll click on that. Come over to here. Um, edge masking. Let me just bring that down. I'll bring that down a bit. And grunge scale. There isn't too many um, parameters in the dirt generator. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Hmm. I think when you first started getting into Substance Painter, just do, just do everything that you have to do. Every model that's dirty, just model stuff that gets heaps shitload of edge uh, edge wear. Get all the, get all the edge wear and shit out of your system, and then do something really subtle. Like I did a mouse a few years ago, just a um, a razor mouse, and it has some really subtle fingerprints on it. You know. It's not covered in mud. And I did a I did the soy sauce fish recently and that's got a nice little fingerprint on it. It's not covered in mud either. And it has no edge wear. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring uh, I'm gonna bring the dirt level up. Let's bring it back up something like that and I'm going to mix up some of these um, materials so uh, these textures did I did I just change the wrong one then I think I did dirt yeah that's right dirt level up see I can invert this as well see there's an invert so if I just bring that to true that will invert that so if I go M now that gives me you know a ton but not quite as much as if we didn't have a mask I think that's good so dirt above that I am going to put a new fill uh, wrong wrong way to do that I need to be on the mask Right click and choose add fill. So this is a this is a fill effect, right? You've got the fill layer, but you've got the fill effect. Kind of like that. That's just basically putting um, uh, grayscale uniform color. Like that. But I don't want that. I want to add some dirt. Let's see what we've got. We've got one thing I don't I find annoying about Substance Painter is this little mini shelf can take a while to load up these uh, images. Maybe it's just my system. Um, I want something I don't know, maybe like that. Let's try concrete. Concrete. Uh, that one may be old concrete. Yeah. That looks pretty good. So that's obviously covering everything up. So now I want to play with my um, blend mode. So I'll come in and choose mul no, multiply. No. Um, light and max. Come back down to dirt and increase the contrast. And I'm just experimenting here. Come up to here. I need to increase the contrast of this as well. And decrease the balance. I'm going for more of this kind of thing. Let's have a look at that. I want I want a little bit of dirt, but I don't want too much. And that's it's too much in a lot of places. Remember, I'm trying to I'm trying to zero in as close as I can using um, parametric methods. Let's invert that. If I invert that and bring the contrast 
up even more. Let's just try dirt. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad you're learning a lot, NZ. Um, me too. Uh, dirt level. Let's bring that down. You could just drop smart materials on an object and go, yay, I've textured it. But it's not really the right way to do it. Okay, dirt level. Just turn that off. Is that doing so that's not actually that's actually not even doing anything now. Um I need to bring this down. I'm gonna bring the opacity down. How's that look? Now it's still way too much. I need a lot less than that. Okay, let's go back to the mask. Okay, one thing I can do, I'm going to undo a few of those. Bring up my, bring down my dirt contrast. Turn on my old grunge concrete. And I want to change the scale. I think it might be a bit big. So I'm just going to You've got to be careful because you start getting a pattern if you go too big. Let's go three. I think I might have to choose a different a different kind of um, grayscale image. Uh, let's go grunge. And this is where you can get really slowed down because there's so many to choose from. Which do I choose? Um, charcoal? Nope. And at this scale, I mean these tiny little thumbnails, they all look the same to me. Uh, dirt, let's try dirt. Mm, nope. Go fingerprints. I've got some specs maybe I could try. Uh, not stains. Splashy dusty shavings. What about what about this? Ooh. That's pretty good. Okay. That's kind of what I'm going for, but it's still too uniform. So come into my dirt. Also, I'm going to bring this down a bit as well. Oops, what did I do? I just deleted it. My dirt is still way too much, especially down the bottom. Um, M. I want I want less than this. Um, one thing I can do is right click on my mask and choose a levels effect and crush down the blacks. See, I don't want just I want spots like this, these kind of flakes, but um, I also want a little bit of other. So slightly lighter dirt. These flakes are a little too much. Let's just see if there's something similar to that. Stone. I like these ones here, just like wipes. You know, where, where he might have wiped his helmet or his visor with um, his 
this one here, grunge, white, smudgy, soft. I might look at that later. Uh, hmm, that's actually the one I want, spots. Uh, okay. Now, they're pretty uniform. What I can do once again is right click, I can add a filter. This is one of my little favorite techniques. I can choose warp. And warp will break those up. See how it sort of breaks them up? They look a lot more realistic like that. And this is exactly how I approached all of the other layers that I was um, I showed you before. Now these are way too uniform. Um, I need to break them up even more. So, see, so yeah, it's like it's got some sort of measles or something. Um, I need to break those up even more. What if I increase the warp amount? That's gonna that's gonna make them. No, they're still they're still too uniform. Okay, um, let's see. I want to break those up, so why don't we try adding another um, another generator? And this time I'll choose. Um, Maybe dirt again. Actually, I think I'm going down a rabbit hole here. I need something like um, drops that's not quite as uniform. Spots, I mean. that down the spots is really close it's exactly the kind of look that I'm kind of after but it's too spotty let's take a look at if there's something else I can use this is where I spend most of my time looking for things um, Go over to the shelf, not resources updater. This looks like I need to update a few of those. Uh, window, shelf. Let's have a look at some of these procedurals. I like mine nice and big. Uh, Grunge map. That looks more like uh, that's too regular. It's a lot to choose from. So this is a, um, a procedural spots. I just want something that's a little... What about this one? Splashes dusty. So I can actually just drag that. Um, well, I've got to be able to see it first over here. I can drag that straight into there like that. That could be much better. Let's go check that one out. These don't have any other parameters. There's no sort of randomness or although it's a random seed. Get rid of 
that one. How's warp going with that? It's um, turn off levels. Let's see what warp is doing for us. Too much. Okay, so I think I could be onto it now. I just need to get levels on. Definitely not as uniform as that spots was. Could bring up the whites a little bit to make them in now. Remember, I'm trying to get as close as I can before I start using paint, and that's probably pretty good. Maybe bring my warp back a bit. So then I'll go through, um, right click on my mask, add paint, nice big brush, and, and add giant ones, no. Um, hit X to invert that, and just fine tune. This one, I probably need to see them. Get that like that, get my stroke capacity up. And just go through. So see how I'm just trying to get as close as I can. Um, this one doesn't need too many. Just a little bit of mud. Probably even bring my levels up a bit. Levels and bit brighter there, like that. I'm not sure if I even need warp. I'll just leave that turned off for now. Click on paint. M. Yeah, that looks a lot better than those those specs. Obviously, this is all wrong in here. You probably get rid of most of this. Just leave a little bit here and there. that so you get the idea see how I'm stacking up all of these and that's that's a pretty usual way to work in substance painter it's really very Photoshop like I mean I've been using Photoshop since 1992 and um, I love working in substance painter if you have any Photoshop skills, you'll find this so easy. Even if you don't, you'll find it easy. So this is nice. This this really these really look like you know splashes of muddy water. You know that one there. See how it's sort of splashed and it's, it's I'm trying to I can't point to it, but there's a little bit of um I'll bring my size down. There's a little bit of darker area here, then it sort of fades off there. You know, it look, looks a lot more like, you know, directional splashes of drips. Much better than those spots. So it's, it pays to spend a little bit of time finding the right um, alpha. This is the bit I like the most, just this fine tuning. So it's going to take a bit of work. I'll probably go, I'll go through and fine tune that, but let's have a quick look. Just say, we'll have a quick look in iRay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep working on that this week. Um, yeah, that's true, Anchor. Uh, I'll keep working on it this week. And what I'll do in the next week's session is I'll update you on everything that I did during the week. 
and then we'll continue working. And eventually what, what we'll do is we'll bring it back across to Redshift um, and um, look at um, adding some hair to the um, cape. I won't be doing that live because I'm very rough with hair, but I'll show you what I did when I get it done. Um, and um, we'll look at lighting and Redshift because I'm just going to do some final hero shots for my portfolio. Um, let's have a look in iRay. Give that a moment. Wakey, wakey. I'm looking at building a new machine this year. Um, this is about four years old, this machine. Get something that's a little more responsive. Yeah. So obviously I still got to keep working um, on cleaning that up, but this is nice. See that little bit of dirt there? It really does start, I mean, I would remove that bit there, but it does start to feel a lot more organic and natural. But you're still getting the sense that it's, it's you know, polished armor, shiny armor. This is looking really nice in here. Looking forward to doing some nice um, different angle shots. Got to clean up around there. And obviously you've got to clean up around there. But this this is a good example of, a, of if he's got splashed mud on his helmet, then he'd have some on his cape. He'd have some on his um, shirt, on the leather. So I'll take all of these grime and dirt and mud layers that I've created and um, tweak them for the rest of him. So I'm doing a lot of the groundwork for that now. And... Um, That'll be really helpful when I do the rest. So I'll call it a day. Those of you who've hung out for the last two hours, thanks for um, hanging out with me. Uh, and um, this will be live uh, sometime today, um, the recording on my YouTube channel. Um, but uh, make sure you um, uh, keep following me on Twitter for updates, and I'll see you next week.